Hello guys, welcome to today's edition of Being the Help I Needed. My name is Theophilus Lamte. Before we begin, I just want to say a quick prayer and then we can kickstart today's program. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to bless your name today. We thank you for the hearts and the souls of the people that are gathered today. We pray above all that by the time we come to an end, let somebody be saved. Let some healing come to somebody. Let your word go forth unhindered and by all means receive all the glory in heaven and grant your children the blessings here on earth. We love you. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Beloved, welcome once again to Being the Help I Needed. We are going to continue um, our teachings on the making of leaders or kings. We are going to go into another um, side of it, and I'm sure you are going to have a lot of fun today. Just in case you tuned in, you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is the Theophilus Lamte Ministries on YouTube and Facebook. And then you want to send it to as many people as possible. I keep telling you that this might be your only proper act of worship or service to God because you are sending the gospel across to other people. You might not be um, fully aware of the impact it's having on people's lives, but those of us who receive the feedbacks from the people that are watching, I can tell you that is doing a great deal of um, work in the lives of people. You are very familiar with my guest, but all the same, I would want him to say hello to you and then give you his name this time around, and then we will be able to um, start today's uh, program. My guest, you are welcome to today's show. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Uh, my name is Kweku Dakujima. I'm a child of God, and um, I mean, a regular guest on this platform. It's a privilege to be here to once again dive into the Word of God and gain some wisdom and insight into what He has to tell us um, in this present time and age. So I'm more than excited to be here, and yes, I can't wait for today to unfold. Thank you very much, my brother. Um, we started off last week looking at the um, life of Saul be before he became a king or before he got anointed. But then because of um, the way we wanted to take it so that we'll be able to explain it properly, we had to go back a little bit where we looked at where, um, I mean, so, I mean um, what would you call it, Samuel came from. Because Samuel was the one who anointed um, um, Saul to become um, king. So we looked at the life of Eli and the background that um, Samuel was privileged to grow up. And then we, we, we learned and saw that what even necessitated that, that um, call for a new king because it was the elders of Israel that were demanding a king from Samuel and we saw that it was because of the moral decadence that was going on in the life of the sons of Samuel and that had already played out in the life of Eli. So one thing that we established was that there is a spirit in association. You just don't want to associate with anybody for the fun of it. You need to be careful who you are dealing with. That was for last week. So today we are coming to look at now how um, Saul um, lived his life, like the family life of Saul with his, his parents. And I'm sure there are lessons that we'll be able to pick that will actually affect how um, well or how bad he was as a king. My brother, so we want to start off today's um, discussion. And we are looking at the life of Saul. And the, fam the family life is very, very important. Yeah. So we are looking at the life of Saul in his father's house. And I'm sure as we go along, we'll be able to pick some very salient points um, in there. So, uh, yes, you, you, you want to start for us and we see what Saul actually was doing in his father's house. Well, it's very interesting. Uh, we've, we've studied thoroughly what the concept of leadership is. Right. And we came to understand that leadership has to do with serve and, and being able to serve with the gifts that God has given to you. Right. And it is interesting to know as we progressed that um, how there was a need for a king, mm -hmm. even though there was Samuel, even though his sons were there, mm -hmm. and how um, because of certain characters that they exhibited, mm -hmm. they didn't qualify for or didn't grow into that leadership position that God wanted them to. And so there was a need for God to now appoint a king over Israel. Mm -hmm. and, and also we did recognize the fact that uh, the people of Israel was, they were demanding for a king. Not even that they disregarded the fact that God was their king and wanted a king like the Philistines, like the Amor, Ammonites and all those things. So it's really interesting. And the journey through which God was able to elect a king is something that is worth talking about. 
um, looking at the fact that he decided to choose a man called Saul. Mm -hmm. And we are interested in that because then that means that once we get to know how God chose the king, mm -hmm. then we will know that, oh, we can also position ourselves and also prepare ourselves in a particular way that God will be able to choose us mm -hmm. to lead industries, to lead territories, mm -hmm. to, to serve his purposes here on earth and even their life after. So it's really interesting. And I remember in the scriptures as we were reading, we, we came across the fact that Saul, mm -hmm. who was the son of Kish, yes, yes, yep, and then his father asked him to go and look for some missing, mm -hmm. was it donkeys? Yes. Yes, I'm missing donkeys, and he got right on his way. I believe that it, it, it draws a point to the fact that Saul came off to his father as someone who is trustworthy right. and someone who is responsible enough that we, we can assign you to the most difficult tax mm -hmm. or the most um, daunting tax, mm -hmm. which is going somewhere without a GPS, mm -hmm without any foreknowledge of where the donkeys are. That, that shows you um, how hectic that job is and how demanding it is. And that he was called upon with the servant to go and look for um, the donkeys. And, and, and this is a, a sort of quality or trait that we really need to see in, in, in leaders of today. Or even if we are, God is preparing you to be a leader, He's going to entrust you. He's going to entrust you with a lot of things that probably may seem almost unachievable or may seem very daunting or very difficult to achieve. But then once he is able to trust you that you are responsible enough or you are trustworthy enough to see the tax through, then, um, I mean, he will, he will be able to put you in these positions of, of leadership and influence. And... I mean, as we progress, we saw that they weren't even making any headway yeah. in, their, in their journey looking for the donkeys. And it, it got to a point where they had gone too far and they have been away for so long that he discerned in the spirit that, oh, I think that after a while my father will, will quit or stop worrying about the donkeys and then start worrying and then about, start worrying about our whereabouts. Mm -hmm. That shows the extreme or the level at which um, he was dedicated to the cause and the level of effort that he put in in his work or the tax that was given to him by his father. And I'm calling upon Christians that we should be able to take those, um, we should be able to position ourselves in these ways where we'll be able to sacrifice, we'll be able to go all out in the things that God has entrusted in our hands. Because we know that the preparation stage, as we studied early on in the previous episodes, that it is the stage where you are given responsibilities by people of um, superior authority or people of higher authority, and then they begin to trust you with things. We studied in the life of Joseph that when he was even in the house of Potiphar, the Bible says that Potiphar didn't have to worry about anything except what he would eat. Mm -hmm. That shows you the level of um, dexterity, the level of hard work that he put in his craft, whatever that he was assigned to do, the, the, the how diligent he was in his tax. And, and we can see that vividly in the life of Saul, that in trust with this um, tax, he went all out to the point that his father might even stop worrying about the donkeys and begin to worry about him. I mean, this, the progression is very beautiful, and I, I, I don't know what you have to say about Very this. interesting it's the way you are talking about it. And what was even striking for me are the, I mean, the valuable lessons that you put across. So we are seeing something like obedience. We are seeing something like respect for his father. Yes. And these things all come together to get a perfect fit because they will kind of impact his leadership skill Absolutely. or his, his, his leadership lifestyle when we, we go forward. So it's very easy for him to say, oh, that I'm not going out to, I, can, I mean, I can't go out to look for these donkeys because I don't even know where they are in the first place. Yeah. So we know from the 
the five stages of um, the, I mean, the making of a leader. Yeah. About the the how to the preparation and all of those things. So it's it's a process. Okay. But in our generation today, we are not interested in um, going through the process. We just want to jump and then get there. So we see him very um, humble. We see him obedient to his parents. So anybody who is looking, um, I mean. Uh, looking at becoming a king or a leader. Yeah. And we're not just talking about like pastors or men of God. So I like the part where you were talking about the fact that um, it's not mm -hmm. just anything like a king or a pastor, but it's got to do with leadership Leader, in industries, industries your CEOs and all of those things. Family life. Family life. It's very interesting. Even to become a man and a woman, you need yeah. to have all these obedience and everything in there. So when we go through the fundamentals, it helps us to function properly whichever area we find ourselves. So the obedience is... Is, is solid respect is very important. And another thing that was interesting when you, when you were talking about was the fact that he, he didn't even have an idea where to start looking um, for the donkeys from. So that talks about how difficult the job would have been. And most of us young people are extremely lazy because first of all, you're like, okay, dad, you said I should go and look for them, so where are they? And then your dad would be like, I don't know. Yeah. And then how can I go and look for them? What do you want me to do? This like, is he didn't say anything. Impossible. No almost impossible, that's right. But then he goes on. And then he's also very sensitive about the father's feelings because he realized that if they go on for so long and they are not able to achieve anything, the dad will now shift um, focus from the animals to him. That talks about the kind of father he had. Because yeah. some father will never be bothered about you until you get a donkey's home. But he knew his father. Yeah. He knew his father. So when God is calling us to an assignment or when God is building us up to um, um, leadership skill and everything, we need to have that kind of connection, that intimacy with God, where we can tell the heartbeat of God, what God is expecting or what God will do next. So it's not necessarily about just being a leader and a leader. And if you're not careful, it will go into your head. So yes, I, I, I like that part about the humility, the respect, and the sense of responsibility. Sense of responsibility. Maturity has responsibility locked in there. So don't be interested in just growing through the, um, the, the, years. the years. And I've been there for 20 years, and this one just came and they've been promoted. The, the bosses or the, lead, the, the top officials, they are looking for little quotes here and there. Responsibility, somebody they can trust. They can so that when they are home, they don't even think about anything in the first place. So yeah, I just wanted to add that. But let me just read from where we started talking about um, the, the life of Saul and then how like, the father sent him out, just so that people will appreciate the fact that it's, it's um, from the Bible. So yeah. you just want to take your Bible with me, First Samuel chapter 9. I'm reading from the verse 3. And he said, and the asses of Kish, that's what he said, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with thee, and arise. Go seek the asses. And he passed through the Mount Ephraim, and passed through the land of um, Shalisha, and they found them not. You saw how spontaneous it was. When the father told him to go, he just, he left. just left. No complaints. No complaints. So I just wanted them to appreciate the fact that it's in the Bible, and then, yes, we'll, we'll be able to continue from there. So I don't know if Absolutely. you want to continue from here. I, I, I was just paraphrasing, you know, the entire story, yeah. and then we will be picking the elements mm of truth, the That's things right. that we really need to mm. pay more attention to mm. um, in, in, in that context. Moving on from the fact that they, they, they found them not, mm. and they kept striving, kept moving towards um, looking for the donkey. It mm. got to a point where, you know, the servants had something to say that, oh, I think that there's a man of God. In That's those right. days, um, the Bible made us understand that they call these prophets mm. um, seers. Yes, yes. And so there's a seer somewhere mm. and around here that can assist us in mm. finding the donkeys. Mm. And all this while, all this while, I think God knew he wanted to bring Saul mm. to someone for mm. him to be anointed. And yep. so even in the midst of confusion, mm. even in the midst of I don't know what to do. Just to, it, not to cut you, I just want to come in a little bit. Yeah. Because he said all this while, um, God knew that he was going to bring um, Saul to Samuel, right? Yeah. So I just want to read where the Bible says that so that the people appreciate that. Absolutely. I mean, you are actually telling them what is in the Bible. Because some of us don't like to read. But please, this time <laughs> you, you must learn to read. So we are still on the first Samuel chapter 9. Yeah. But this time it's the verse 15. He said, now the Lord had told Samuel um, in his ear a day before. My God. A day before came saying, 
Tomorrow about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be the captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people because their cry is come unto me. Look at the, 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 the detailed nature of a man from this town. He will yeah. do this and that and that. So yes, just so that um, you, 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 you continue yeah. from, from there. I, I love that. But the, the thing I was driving at mm. initially was the fact that even Saul himself mm. had no idea yes. that something, something like that, like that had already gone ahead. That's right. And so I was, I was drawing to the fact that we might find ourselves in difficult situations, mm. in situations where we, we've lost track of where we are going to. We, we, the, the goal looks blare mm. and it looks as if we don't know what we are about, mm. what we are doing. Mm. And... Uh, we are losing hope, but then God has a plan. Mm. So it, it will come to a point where you feel you've lost track of where you are heading to, That's where right. you are going. Mm. But then that is not the case. Most of the time, God has prepared something for us. God has orchestrated something for us that if we will only press on. Imagine that when Saul said that, oh, let's go back, my father will be worried. Mm. And they decided to go back mm. and not pursue a little bit more, just a little bit more, yeah, little to bit see more. the seer or to see the man of God to help them um, with some sense of direction. They would have lost. He would have lost their anointing. Mm. He wouldn't have met someone. Mm. And 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 that is what I want to say to encourage and some of us that are going through difficult times, mm. difficult situations where it seems as if. We, we, there's no hope. It seems as if what we are looking for, we are not finding. If only we'll press on a little more, if only we'll persevere a little more, God has a plan for you and God has something that will change your life. And, 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 and that is very interesting to, to know. I don't know if you have anything to say about that. I think the perseverance bit is very, very important. So I just want to encourage the viewers that... Um, Probably we'll put the link to the making of the leader yeah. so that they will take their time and go through the systematic um, nature of that recording as, yeah. as well. It will be somewhere in the description so that they will be able to follow through. And we see that the process is not just you, you come today and you, you appear tomorrow. tomorrow. If you jump that kind of stage, there will be a lot of issues that you go through. So that perseverance bit is very important. And you know, even something that was striking to me when you were talking, even our salvation, you need to endure. Yes. Because the Bible said that you must, you'll be saved by your endurance. Yeah. So if you get saved today, like you are saved, Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, and then you don't put in a lot of work, you don't, you don't endure whatever will come, Absolutely. you are just going to give up at some point in time. So somebody made this statement, and I, I, I kind of like it. He said, Christianity to the end is not about enjoyment. It's rather about endurance. Mm. You see, so we have to, and endurance means it's not very comfortable. <laughs> it's not very, uh, like, interesting. So you would have to take your time, go through it systematically and understand the fact that there are going to be times where things are going to be tough. Yeah. There are going to be times where things are not going to be the way you want it. But then you keep pushing. You keep pushing and eventually you are going to make it. So just an advice to we the young ones. Things will not fall in place automatically Absolutely. because probably a prophet said it or you even had a dream. Look at Joseph for instance. Yeah. He had a vision himself that he was going to be so big but, and just so that I'll calm somebody's heart down, I'll probably put some fear of God in somebody who is listening. Look at what happened to Joseph. God did not tell him the details of the prison, the potiphar, and all of that. All yeah. he knew was, this is me today, and this is what I'm going to become tomorrow. Absolutely. But the detail, the outline in there, is supposed to be what we will discover. Because God knows that if he tells us all those details, at the end of the day, it's going to break us um, apart. So we have to be extremely careful to understand that whatever God has said will come to pass. Absolutely. But the outline details, we are going to discover them bit by bit as we go, and we need to just trust God. Okay. Yeah, so with regards to what you were talking about, you're talking about the fact that the, the servant said there was a man, the man of God in town, yeah. and then I just came in. So, yeah. I mean, we, we can pick it up from there. Let's see the significance of the man of God, and then how Saul and his um, servant demonstrated a, a few things absolutely, there. Yeah. Absolutely. I think one thing that was profound for me mm -hmm was when the servant mm. <laughs> mentioned that, oh, there is a man of God yeah. and um, we, 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 we can see him mm. to help us. Mm. The, Saul made a statement. He was like, what do we have to offer what him? What do we have that to is, offer? 
that is someone who is very conscious mm. of mm. what he what is required of him. That's right. Because I mean, it takes some level of honor mm. and some level of respect mm. to know that if you are going to even see a man of God mm. or let's say a prophet, mm. you have to carry a substance mm. um, or something to honor them mm. and not just merely, you know, come there. And, and it's, it's a quote mm. that we need to be able to deduct as the body of Christ mm. um, in this day and age where um, all sorts of manipulations mm. and things are going mm. on and all sorts of, you know, pride mm. is, is happening around us that we are able to download these codes mm. um, that, that really will help us mm. in our journey and growing to become leaders. Mm. And I, I, I think that we need to also credit the servant That's right. that he, he made that suggestion mm. and, and n knowing that, oh, at some point, Saul was thinking that, oh, my father will be worried and mm. let's let's go back mm. and it's it's it, it shows from this whole um story mm. that it is important to have company That's and true. not just mere company mm. but a very good counsel mm. as uh, people of authority or people mm. who are um, living their lives mm. we need that counsel we need that support mm. we need that uh, you can do it. Mm. Let's let's press on. You need that fire, that mm. ginger somewhere, mm. and it, it it we with open hearts we'll be able to have these people in our lives to mm. always encourage us, even when the going gets tough, mm. even when you feel like you you want to give up. Mm. Um, these are things that will also help us mm. to to you know journey along. I, I know you want to talk a little bit about the anointing. Yes, when you were talking, I was just trying to process a few things in my mind. And you see, like you said, the fact that um, there are a lot of mix-ups or corruption in the system as far as all this, you are going to a man of God, you are going to somebody of authority, and you, you, you take a gift that's going on. It doesn't take away the fact that these things are very important. Absolutely. It's very important because, I mean, let's, let, let's, let's take the spiritual bit aside. Let's look at it in the physical. Nobody just goes to a president and we just go and say, I just want to see him. There are protocols. Yeah. But it's because we don't ascribe a lot of importance to the men of God. Mm. And like I said, I mean, don't get it wrong. A lot of people have messed it up, for lack of a, a better word. But it doesn't take away the fact that there are genuine ones out there. And it doesn't take away the effect or the power it carries. These quotes carry so I want to advise somebody, or probably advise myself and you being my brother, that it's very dangerous because you can have a prophet in your home and not know. Mm. It's not just about the fact that you are going out there to go mm. and look for a prophet. Yeah. Because your husband can be a prophet, your wife can be a prophetess. And you need to use the same code to be able to draw from them. So a man of God told us a story one day in church. The man, like he knew a man of God who was very powerful in Whatever he was doing for people was working, like praying for them and things were unlocking and all of that. But they were suffering. The wife was going through a lot of financial challenges. But they prayed for other people and things opened up. So one day, I don't know if it was an inspiration or somebody told the wife and she came to herself and she's like, no, how can the prayers of my husband be working for people and I'm still struggling? So one day, I think the man of God was at home. The woman just found some seed, went and knelt down and the man was like, ah, why are you doing that? He said, at that time, you know what happened? She stopped calling the husband, like, my husband. It's, at that time, she addressed the man of God. And the husband was like, ah, what is going on? He said, no, at this time, you are not my husband. You are a man of God. So what makes it work for the other people? <laughs> Let it work for me. And she dropped the seed. And you see, God has a way. The anointing will be provoked. Absolutely. Because all this while that she was calling her my husband, whatever he, he was doing for her was my husband. So we need to pay attention to some of these things. Be sensitive. Let God open your eyes to some of these areas. And it's not just about the fact that you have to go to a man of God or anything. You can be having that anointing sitting right in your home. So it's just a caution for um, us. And a reference to that one, you look at the life of Jacob when he, he said, come around me, let me define your future for you. That was a prophet in his home. You see, and then also when um, Jacob and Esau, they were young and their father wanted to release the anointing, he talked about venison. You see, so there is something you must understand. Nothing comes from heaven unless something leaves the earth. 
Nothing is provoked in the spirit unless something is released in the physical. So Isaac had the anointing, but why could he not release it until venison has entered him? Your soul must be excited for the anointing to be provoked. Then when you speak, it carries weight. So when you give a seed or something material to a man of God, you are not throwing it away, but you must do it with that kind of intentionality. That is what will unlock whatever is in the man of God that you have been seeking after. So the servant doing this thing was perfect. You see, so I like the fact that you said in the council of, um, in the multitude of council, there is safety. Because if it was Saul alone, it, it, it wasn't as if Saul did not know about this code, but probably it hasn't like occurred to him. So he would have roamed, 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 got tired and, and then gone back home because the father would be worried. So it's important that we get people around us that will help us. So when God grants you that grace and brings people around you that um, you, can, you can pick inspiration that they are sensitive, do whatever it takes to keep them. There are so many examples in the Bible. This is just one. Another one was Naaman and then the servant who was the one that forced or kind of coerced him to do what was necessitated um, for him to be able to get his, his, his healing of his leprosy. So yeah, that's just um, a general idea about the anointing and all of those things. So something must go for something to come. And it's true, we've abused it. Everything is in excess, but it doesn't take away the fact that there are original ones out there. The fact that you can see the abuse or the excess of it means that there is an original, but you must um, deliberately look for them. You must work hard to be able to find the original. So Christianity, like they always say, or your salvation, they say, work it out with fear and trembling. So there is a part where um, the life of Christ is given to you, but there is a part where you must endure whatever it comes with. So when the woman was caught in adultery and brought to Jesus, I thought, for instance, he was going to say, oh, um, you know, do a follow-up. And it is good to do follow-up, but what if you don't have that um, kind of resource? So he told her, go and see no more. From that time till rapture or um, the judgment time, you see that it will only be the woman who is supposed to deal with whatever she was going through. So I don't know if you want to um, come in at this point, and then, yes, we'll, we will take it um, from there. All right, so, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. We are... Uh, thank you, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so moving on. Um, after, they made, after Saul asked that, do we have something? They got something, and then they went ahead to look for the seer. And something happened in, in the story there, and I really want us to be able to pick it right from the Bible and mm. be able to digest it. Mm. Um, if we could read Samuel, um, the chapter 9, from the verse, um, say, from the verse 18. From the 18. Okay, so first Samuel, chapter 9, verse 18. I mean, when you, you just cut me if you want me to. 18. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. Mm. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for ye shall eat with me today, and tomorrow I will let thee go, and will tell thee all that is in thine heart. Should I go on? Yeah. And as for thine asses, they were lost three days ago. Set not thy mind on them, for they are found. And on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is it not on thee and on all thy father's house? <laughs> all right. I, I, this is very interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, I know we're reading from King James, right? Yeah. Uh, the dying and the dying. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, but then, like, what really hit me was the fact that when he met Samuel, mm. Samuel was, told him that he should go up to the high place and today he's going to eat with him. Mm. And he made a statement. He was like, I will send you on your way mm -hmm. in the morning mm -hmm. and I will tell you all that is in your heart. That's right. As for your three, they, as for your donkeys, mm. they were lost three. I mean, just reading this, I'm coming to understand that truly the things that really worry us mm. is not what, I mean, that is something small mm. compared to what God really wants to do with our lives. That's right. 
like you worrying about your your donkeys. They were lost three days ago. He said, don't worry about that. No, that one, they are found. Mm. But there's something in your heart. Mm. And, and he's talking about your heart desires. Mm. And I'm beginning to think that, I mean, the, you know, in the account, they didn't really tell us what they discussed up there. Yeah. You know, what was really in Saul's heart, mm. regardless of everything that he was doing. And it's quite um, baffling and it's quite interesting to sort of like um, try and wrap your head around mm. what was really happening mm. there. Mm. And the fact that he, 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 and what happened from the conversation was that what is in your heart, mm. it is much more important mm. and it's much more present. Mm. And it is much more viable mm. than even the donkey that you, you set out to That's look right. after. And, mm. and I want to be able to draw more meaning into it that regardless of the things that we are pursuing, oh, I want to secure this job, mm -hmm. I want to secure this home, mm. I want to secure this. There's a higher calling mm. that God has put in your heart, That's right. that God has placed in your heart that if you don't get to that, mm. if you, you are not able to fulfill that desire, mm that thing that God has put in your heart mm. and has, has prepared for you, mm. true fulfillment will not come to you. Mm. True happiness will not come to you. And, and I just wanted to be able to throw more light on that for, for okay, our let me Okay, let me come in so that you throw the light on them so that you can just take a yeah. breather for a second. What I'm trying to say here is, um, you see the way you said what is in your heart is bigger than what is happening. But I want also the viewers to also appreciate the fact that God will always use something as a precursor. Absolutely. So there will be donkeys in your life, not yeah. necessarily. So the fact that the donkeys were missing is not because they have to be missing. Yeah. It was in God's divine plan. Absolutely. So there will be precursors in your life that you are supposed to uh, move with. But they are going to drive you towards that very much more important activity. But oftentimes the precursors are what rather lock us down and we never... Um, take advantage of the real situation. Yeah. So just a form of um, caution to our, our, our distinguished um, listeners that when you see that anything is happening to you, look for the bigger picture. So the bigger picture, if you, if you actually yeah. um, saw what it was, it was it, it, the, the seer kept talking about Israel, talking about Israel. So the precursor was the three donkeys, but the real deal, the actual thing God wanted to do was the fact that Israel was at stake. Because God was preparing Saul for um, kinship in Israel. Absolutely. So we shouldn't let the precursor go ahead of us and then just sweep us off our feet and we miss the real deal. But when we see the precursor, we should still be sensitive to know when to cut off from the precursor. Because he told them that these things that you are so bothered about that you left your home to come and seek for has been found. Has been found. Now let's move on to the real let's issue. But now let's move on to the real issue is our problem. Absolutely. The youth of today. Now let's move on to the real deal. We are not able to um, fulfill that one. So yes, now you can um, throw and the he light said that, He said that, and to whom mm. is all the desire of Israel turned, yes. if not to you mm. and your whole family line. This That's is, right. This is, this is powerful. Mm -hmm. This is powerful mm -hmm. because, like, this is the calling. That was the thing. This is the Israel calling. was crying for a king. a king. And that was what God is trying to do. So the whole of Israel's headache is now on Saul, and he didn't even know. My God, my God. So in 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 leadership, mm. God is calling us to a group of people. That's right. That, um, or He's calling us to be able to bring into, you know, fulfillment mm. into purpose mm. a group of people, mm. and that calling is so superior to not just you know our individual interest. That's true. But then to, and to the interest of the group mm. or the people that you are called to lead. Mm. And it is always, once we find ourselves in leadership positions, mm. we should know that God has called us to something superior, something mm. that has a larger interest or a larger group of people's mm. interest at heart. That's right. And not just about our selfish gains. It's not just about um, our individualism mm. or just you know, um, say what we'll eat today and what we'll wear tomorrow. Mm. It goes far beyond mm. that. This is the desire of a group of people, mm. it's the desire of a nation mm. being put in your hands mm -hmm. and, and being um, 
handed over to you yeah. and your family and your, your family life. And it's, and it's, it's so important. And when, um, what dawned on me is when Samuel said that to Saul, the first thing that came out of Saul was that, am I not a Benjamite mm -hmm. from the smallest tribe yep. of Israel? Mm -hmm. And it's my clan, not the least mm -hmm. of all the clans of the tribe of Benjamin. Mm. And it just blew me away mm. because this is how I, I believe God will usually do his things. That's true. He will take the thing that seems to be the least That's right. and make uh, something great out of it. Mm. He will take the, the smallest person, the smallest town, the mm. smallest gift that mm. you have, the least thing that you, oh, this is my voice there, it's, it's nothing. Really nothing yeah. And uh, I mean, I, I, what is this? Mm. And, and he will take that voice and he will use it to minister to nations. Mm. And to multitudes, mm. and he will take that gift of yours that you think that oh, I, I just have these weird dreams, mm. and he will be able to make of of something mm. those dreams. So you take that thing. Oh, this is my reason. I think very funny, and I think very weird. Mm. I think I'm not like the usual or the ordinary people. And mm. with that way of the way you process things, mm. he 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 adds light to it and. It becomes, he shows it to the whole world. That's right. and, and that is what I want to like drive home mm. today to even our viewers that are watching, that regardless how small you think you are or how least important you, you perceive yourself to be, mm. God wants to make something mighty out of you. That's right. And if only you avail yourself mm. and you avail your, your heart and your mind mm. and you commit to the process, he will be able to make a king out of you. Mm. He'll be able to make a king out of the, mm. the least mm. thing that you, you've imagined yourself mm. or you've seen yourself to be. You see, um, I, I like the way you said, regardless of all the... Uh, uh, let me say it in another way. Okay. In fact, the only qualification God needs to be able to use you is that you have nothing and you are nothing. That is what actually God is looking for. Thank God. Because he's going to qualify you so then if you have anything or you have something then you don't qualify mm. so he takes the unqualified and he qualifies them so anyone that is listening to me out there the fact that you can identify yourself as having nothing or um, um, not having anything worthy to talk about that is what qualifies you for God to qualify you mm. yes so you need to qualify for God to qualify you, but your qualification for God to qualify you is that you have nothing. Mm. So like my brother Riley said, and I'm not well-schooled, and I don't come from a rich background, that is what God wants. Okay. Those are the kind of things that God wants. The reason being that he wants to make a statement for himself. Absolutely. He wants to get to that point where when things are beginning to happen, they will say that this can only be God. Mm. And he does that also to build in us that virtue called humility. Because if you don't have humility mm. as a man, Michael. you will not be able to take instructions from deities. Mm. We are in a physical world ruled by spirits. Yeah. So when Jesus came into the world, the first two virtues that he adopted, that he did work on very strongly, was humility and obedience. The Bible says he humbled himself, even to the death on a cross, a shameful one as such. See, and he learned obedience through suffering. So when you have humility and obedience fused together, then you can succeed as a man. If God in human form needed those two things to function, I don't think I can be able to function without those two things. So the fact that you have nothing, the fact that you come from nowhere, the fact that you don't have any names in your family, that is what qualifies you for God to you. So that one day God will make a statement. And you know why? That part was interesting. It got to a point where Saul now began to feel arrogant and, pr and proud about whatever was going on, and God reminded him. Mm. So God is in the business of reminding you when you forget where you are coming from. Where you are coming from. So it's a blessing to note where you are coming from. It happened to David. The yeah. Bible said that God told him to keep the shepherd's clothing, hang it in the palace. You are still in the palace but hang the shepherd's clothing there so that when you are misbehaving, memorial. you are misbehaving, you can just turn back and see and, and you remember that you used to be in the bush. Oh 
my God, this is a revelation. <laughs> you see the way it is. And wow. it's sad now that now we have believers that don't want to have anything to do with their past. My God. Nobody is saying that you should live in your past. Yeah. But we are saying that let your past be a frame or picture in your living room. Mm. That every time you, you glance at it, it takes you back where you are coming from. My and then God. it tells you what God has done in your life. So when some of us, and this is just to the viewers, when you hear some of us talking about the kind of useless life we used to have, it's not because we are living in it. It's because it is a frame that we are painting to you so that when you put them side by side to what God is using us to do today, you can see the journey. But somebody will say, oh, I don't even want anybody to know that I fornicated before. Mm. So then they come and give you a picture, yeah. sanctimoniously holy, yeah. so that when you are living the life they are talking to you about and you are not able to live it, you feel like there is something, there is wrong. something wrong. So we must be very open, we must be very clear as much as possible Thank to people so that we, they will say that we don't walk on the moon. We are humans. So all the things we've done before, you are not proud about them, yeah. but you are happy that God delivered you out of them and God has positioned you somewhere. Powerful. So for the believers out there, don't be shy about what you used to do. Don't be shy about the word is you used to do. You, you, I mean, you should be shy if you are still doing it. But if you used to do it, then God has delivered you. And the essence of sharing testimony is that somebody will see what God can do and have an interaction with God and build a personal um, relationship with God as well. But we just want to paint that very beautiful picture without any spots. But everybody has spots everybody has wrinkles so when you move and you get into that fine tune then you actually can appreciate where god picked you from so it's very very important don't ever forget where you are coming from the danger is that you will not know where you are going right. because even the gps when you you punch the gps before it will be able to calibrate and give you the time or the distance it must lock you onto your location where you are so if you decide not to give your location, you can't get to where you are going. My God. So we are a lot of believers. We don't want the world to see our location where God picked us from. But yes, so we say we are heading towards somewhere. Absolutely. How then do you know the time it will take you? Mm. How then do you know um, where you are supposed to pass? Because it will only read it when it picks where you are now. Yeah. So anybody that is listening to me, this is a fine opportunity for you to invite the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the spiritual GPS, just in case you are asking. Mm. It will take you anywhere you need to get to. But first of all, it will pick your current location. And your current location is the situation you find yourself in. Yeah. So is that opportunity where you have to give your life to Christ? You have to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior? Yeah. When you do that, you are locking your location now. Yeah. And then the GPS, which is the Holy Spirit, will now navigate your path and take you to your destination uh, eventually. So I, I don't know if you want to My God, come you, in now. You, you just took up the words from my <laughs> mouth. <laughs> and the, you have done justice to it. This mm. is so powerful. Mm. That regardless wherever we are mm. or how small we are, mm. we should know that God can make a message out of our lives. That's right. And when he does... Mm we should never, ever forget where he took us from. Most important. Yeah. And I, f I believe that that is where the focus trumps. Yeah. Me, that you, you focus on the journey. Mm. You, you keep it right there and mm. move with mm. God through and through. Mm. And we, because the heart of man can shift. That's right. And so that th there was a need for you to be remembered mm. about where you are coming mm. from. Mm. And... I believe as we progress, we'll see where the shift happened mm. in the life of Saul. Mm. Um, someone as, as um, stout and powerful mm. as we know him mm. to be. Mm. Looking at these traits that he possessed yeah. um, all through um, before the anointing and even during you know, his reign as a king. That's right. We saw certain good things about him. Mm. And then also we saw where things began to twist mm. and where things began to go south for him. Mm. We would dive deeper into those things and begin to pick keys mm. of how these things can make a man or a leader fall. That's right. Or not be able to attain his true mm. purpose mm. or the, the ultimate goal that God has mm. really designed for him. Because from what we just read, mm. from what we just read, mm. the the heart 
or the desire of Israel mm. was turned to him mm -hmm. and his family line. Mm. So what happened? Mm. Moving on, we will find out that the thing changed from his family line, mm. and the focus shifted, and it went to someone else. Mm. Like, and and it's, it's cause for Allah, because why would God say something and now come and change his mind? Mm. I mean, we, it means that we can do things that God can change his mind about us. That's right. That is like, a, that cause for a lot of fear, a lot of like caution mm. to look out for. Mm. And so I, I love the progression so far and all these traits about someone. And moving forward, we realized that even for him, mm. it got to a point where um, Saul began to, someone began to tell him mm. about the things that was going to happen to him. That's right. And I saw some level of discernment mm. in, in, in the message that Simon was, um, Samuel was telling mm. him and how he kept those things mm. and how he guarded those things mm. to a point that some, someone asked him, oh, let the servant go ahead and um, let me tell you something. Mm. And it's very interesting because it, it points out to me that there's a need for some sort of discernment, yeah. some sort of discretion, um, discretion mm. as well in, in, in the things and the, the um, things that God lays on our hearts and God tells us that regardless, you know, the environment, regardless the, you know, how much we want to share mm. our message, mm. there are certain things that we really need to keep for Perhaps them so. to brood, mm. for them to be able to birth mm. what God really is planning and envisioning mm. and not let them out loosely mm. to the world. And this is like a strong message, especially in the world where we are in, that it's like we are living our lives and it's outside for public display. That's true. Um, everything that God tells us in a dream, everything that he tells us in a vision, everything that um, someone prophesies to us or something, we just share it with the whole world that everybody should see. This is what God is about to do. Mm. And we start posting about mm. it and all those things. And I mean, just that, that level of discretion is very important. Could it be that that is how come the devil comes to attack our seeds mm. and, and destroy them at or plants his own things at the early stages and then they don't grow up becoming what God has envisioned for them to be. Their lives are cut short mm. because we let um, people in, we let the devil in so cheaply. Mm. And, and a cause for caution that we are able to guard these things. We should be able to discern who to talk to, mm. who to let in our business, what to let out, what not to let out. Mm. And it's so important that we, be, we, are, we are able to grab this message um, clearly because of the season in which we are in and how um, information is, is easy to, to let out. I don't know if you have something to say yes. about that. Um, I know you have a lot to say about it. Yeah. Not, not, not a lot to say, actually. I think because of time constraints, we, we will just try to, at this point... Um, try to outline the major or the most important lessons we want to yeah. put um, out there so that um, our, um, our viewers will be able to appreciate it. So um, what I'm going to do is I'll, maybe I'll give one or two, then you give one yeah. or two, and then we'll just wrap up because I think we just have a few um, minutes to go. But just before we do that, I just want to encourage our viewers out there that this is the Theophilus Dante Ministries on YouTube and Facebook. We just want you to share with somebody, subscribe, encourage them that, um, yes, um, this is the adult education in Bible studies so that we'll be able to build on the things that we did whilst we were little children and not only remember David and Goliath and Jacob and Esau and the poor region, stuff like that, because there are um, a lot of things that Jeez, affect yeah. our lives even at this point. So we've been dealing with the life of Saul as a family man, proud to him becoming the king of Israel, which was the burden of Israel at the time. One of the things that I remember we said is the fact that this Saul guy had spiritual intelligence. Mm, absolutely. And you just erupt up by talking about the fact that he, he had discretion. He was discerning enough to know what to keep and all of that. And we see the spiritual intelligence of Saul playing out even when he became king. Absolutely. When David came to um, defeat Goliath. Saul made a statement that only spiritual people can make. Mm. And the statement is, whose son is this? He asked mm. three times, mm. what does a person's father got to do with what they conquer? <laughs> so My Saul God. is not an ordinary person. He was spiritually deep. Yeah. 
Yes. So I just want to add weight to what you just said that he, he knew what to keep to himself. My he knew God. what to um, brood upon, waiting for the time of manifestation. So that was um, one of the lessons that we learned. And I want our viewers to also take it home seriously. Pay attention to spiritual intelligence. Know what to keep. Know what to put out there. Know what is for you. It's not everything that even your wife or your husband must know. When because God when Abraham him. was given an instruction, he didn't tell the wife. Mm -hmm. If God wanted the two of them to know, God has a way of telling them. Yeah. That doesn't mean you are supposed to keep secrets, but spiritual things have, um, what, would you, what, 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 what do the Americans call it? Clearance. clearance. They have clearance level. Yeah. So if your pay is not up to that grade, you are not privy to that information. My God. So that is one thing that we needed to look at. And then also another lesson is, God takes you through all this process to build some virtues inside of you. My One God. is what we've said, obedience, respect, um, diligence, trustworthiness, and a sense of responsibility. Because he's raising you to a level of influence where a lot of people are supposed to have um, an e effect on you. I, I think you want to talk about the lesson where one man is walking, but the whole of the country was um, on his head, and he didn't yeah. even know. He didn't even know. I want you to give that lesson to them and then add uh, the other ones that you have and then we'll, we'll see if we'll still have some time to um, add one or two more and then we'll, we'll be able to call it um, wraps. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to talk about the fact that, mm. you know, aside the, the discretion mm. in terms of um, keeping what God... Even we realized that, moving on, we realized that even when he got back mm. from... Uh, meet, the meeting with Samuel. Samuel, okay. His, I think his uncle asked him that, oh, mm -hmm. what did Samuel say? He said, yeah. He was... Still discreet about he it. He was still discreet mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's, it's quite important mm -hmm. that leaders mm -hmm. or people born in these capacities are able to learn these things. Mm -hmm. Because we've seen a lot of leaders mm -hmm. fail. Mm -hmm out of just mere carelessness. Mm. You understand? Yeah. Mere carelessness of just talking anyhow, mm. speaking anyhow. Mm. But if God is preparing you to become mm. a leader mm. and, and, and a powerful one as that, I think that one of the qualities mm. is to be able to hold on to certain sensitive, sensitive information, sensitive information mm. certain secrets, mm. certain things that... Um, he 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 mm. he used to build people and and I, it's very important mm. that we're able to you wanted me to talk about also the fact that an entire uh nation yeah one man was walking one unknowing, man, to him, unknowing to him unknowing to him the headache walked, of a, a nation he, he he walked into a party yeah. that initiated him into becoming uh, the the king mm. of 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 israel, of israel. Yeah. and that is how god does his things mm from a condition of confusion, mm. of we are lost, mm. we are looking for something we can't find, mm. and we are so desperate about it, and we, we are moving forward, and then we all of a sudden just walk into mm. a party where even the food we will eat was set apart for us. Mm. I mean, that is how God does his things, and that is the beauty of, of how if we really prepare ourselves, mm. God, that is how the spotlight comes, yeah. that all of a sudden, before you realize this light is on you and everybody's mm. looking for you. Everybody's mm. asking, ah, who are you? This mm. guy, we, and, and as we are progressing, we'll see those things in the story of, mm. in, the, in the story of Saul as he was crowned king mm. and how he hid himself and he was brought out and he was the tallest among mm, all the of people, them. Yeah. And, like the light was just on him. Mm. And that is the beauty of the season of appearing. Mm. But then we also cautioned ourselves that when the season of appearing happens, it doesn't mean that you have achieved your goal or yeah. you have reached your purpose. Mm. It is a platform that mm. God gives you just so that more men will see your good works mm. and give glory to him. Mm. So everything at that stage, the light at that stage is to be able to propagate, propagate the gospel, to propagate the good news about God. And so looking for, we, we, I'm excited for the next episode mm. as we dive deep into those things mm. and, and come up with, you know, these keys that will help us to become good leaders, will help us to 
grow through the, um, the stages of leadership and kinship mm. and be able to build ourselves strong as, as Christians and believers in that respect. Thank you very much, my brother. If, if we say we want to go on and on, we are not going to complete. But we thank God that, I mean, there will be a follow-up um, into next week. And then so we'll just try to draw some of the lessons from today's one and jump into that one. I just wanted to add one more, and then that will be it. One of the things about God is that he's a planner. He's very careful and detailed about the things that he does. So you look at the fact that he has already spoken to Samuel ahead of time. He has already told Samuel, given him description, the person's hometown is, is everything was properly laid out for yeah. before the guy like you said it came out of confusion and walked into his destiny which was waiting for him so god god um is, is that kind of person who is very detailed intentional he just doesn't do things anyhow for the sake of it so whatever god is doing in our life is very very deliberate and we must um take all the um attention to be able to make it work as much as possible viewers uh, I don't know what to say, but sometimes when it, it, it gets this interesting, you don't want to go, but yes, we know time constraints won't allow us to do that. We just want to uh, remind our first-time viewers that we are really excited to have you join us. You want to subscribe um, and send a friend. If it blesses you, by all means, send it to somebody. The essence of the good news is that you will spread it. And if it, this is good news, like we believe it is, you would want to spread it. You might not be able to preach the whole world, but your family, your friends, your close buddies, they are your, your, your church. So when you're able to deal with them, everything else will fall in place perfectly. This is being the help I needed. That is showing on the Theophilus Lamte Ministries on YouTube and Facebook. And we are excited to have you. This week has been amazing. We, I'm very excited. I've learned a lot of things myself. I know that it's been a blessing to you too. We want to say thank you to all our production team, the cameramen, the, the lighting guys, the audio guys. We say God bless and keep you. And whatever you do, may it succeed to the glory of his name. Till we meet again next week. This has been Theophilus Lamte here together with um, Kwekudako Jima. And it's been an amazing time. We'll see you around next week. Stay and stick around. Bye-bye for now.